Welcome to the sixth episode of the 2024 GCE Mathematics Paper 1. If you haven't watched the other episodes, I've just pinned them in the comment section below. Alright, so today we are starting from question 15. And question 15a says, two points A and B have coordinates negative 5 comma negative 3 and negative 1 comma a respectively given that the gradient of the line a b is 2 find the value of a so here you need to understand this word respectively so when they say a and b have coordinates this one and this one respectively it means that these coordinates here belongs to a and the last coordinates belongs to b so it means that we are having a the coordinates a being negative 5 comma negative 3 and then b as negative 1 comma a so this is what they mean when they say a and b have coordinates this one and this one respectively all right they have also given us that the line a b has the gradient 2 so m which is the gradient is equal to 2 so they want us to find the value of a how are you going to find the value of a to find the value of a we are going to use the formula for finding the gradient okay so we're going to say the gradient m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 now when you look at these two points point a and b you don't have these y1s y2 x1 x2 so which means that you need to give any of these points to be point one so i'm going to give this one as point one if this is point one it means that this will be x1 and this will be y1 then this will be point two and then this will be x2 and this will be y2 all right so what we need is just to replace these values in the formula so we have been given the gradient m which is 2 so where there is m here we're going to replace a 2 is equal to y2 y2 is a so we're going to have a then minus this minus is this one here y1 y1 is negative 3 so you put in brackets like this negative 3 to avoid mistakes okay then over x2 x2 is negative 1 then minus x1 is negative 5 so you put in brackets also like this to avoid mistakes so let's just simplify this so we have 2 is equal to a then negative times negative will be positive so we have plus 3 here over uh, negative 1 then negative times negative will be positive so we have positive 5 here so we have 2 is equal to a plus 3 over negative 1 plus 5 is positive 4. So at this stage, when you look at the right-hand side of this equation, we have a fraction. So meaning even here, we can write it as a fraction by saying over 1. So at this stage, we cross multiply. So 1 times a plus 3 is a plus 3 is equal to 2 times 4 is 8. So remember, we are looking for the value of a. So to find the value of a, we need to remove this other term. So we are going to remove this term by additive inverse. This is positive 3. So to remove this positive 3, we are going to do the opposite of positive 3, which is negative 3 on both sides. Okay? Let me finish it up from here for the sake of space. So we are having a then this has become a 0 because positive 3 minus 3 is a 0 is equal to 8 minus 3 8 minus 3 is 5 so which means that a is 5 all right but b they are saying that y so at b they are saying given that y is equal to uh, 4x cubed 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 2x squared then plus 1 
plus 1. Find dy dx. So they want you to find dy dx. Okay? How do you find dy dx? dy dx means that you are differentiating this function with respect to x. You are differentiating this function y with respect to x. So to differentiate means that you are going to subtract a 1 from the power and multiply by the, the odd power. So what we are saying is we are going to have 3, which is the power, times this coefficient, 4, then x to the power, 3, then take away 1, then minus uh, the power, 2, times the coefficient, 2, then x to the power 2 minus 1, then the derivative of any constant is 0, okay? So we're going to have 3 times 4 is 12, then x, 3 minus 1 is 2, so we have to the power 2, and minus 2 times 2 is a 4, then x, 2 minus 1 is to the power 1, Anything raised to the power 1 is just itself. So we are just having this because this is a 0. So which means that dy dx is 12x squared minus 4x. So 12x squared minus 4x. So this is the dy dx. Right, by doing this, you would have earned yourself 4 marks. Alright, question 16 says the length of a sugar cane is measured as 2.6 meters. If the true length is 2.5 meters, find the absolute error. All right, so at A, they want you to find the absolute error. So absolute error is given by the measured value, okay, measured value minus true value. And this should be absolute you write vertical lines like this to say you are looking for the absolute value. Meaning, even if the answer that you find inside there is, is negative, it should be always positive. All right, so let's just replace. We have the measured value as 2.6 because they are saying the length of a sugar cane is measured as 2.6. So we have the absolute of 2.6 minus the true value is uh, 2.5 okay so 2.6 minus 2.5 is 0 0.1 so the answer is 0 0.1 so this is the absolute error some of you you may be wondering how I found the 0 0.1 you can just do 2.6 minus 2.5 then like this 6 minus 5 is 1 drop the point 2 minus 2 is 0, so that's why it's 0 0.1. So the absolute error is 0 0.1, like this. The second question, but B, they are saying find the percentage error. So to find the percentage error, you have to know that the percentage error is given by the formula absolute error over the true value times 100%. Okay? So, absolute error. The absolute error is this one that we found here. So, we are going to put 0 0.1 over the true value. The true value is 2.5. So, we are having uh, 2.5 times 100. Okay? So, at this stage, we can just multiply this by 100. You have two zeros here. It means that this decimal is going to move two times to the to the right. So we are going to have 10 over 2.5. So here we are having 10 divided by 2.5. To find how many 2.5s are in 10, we are going to multiply uh, both the denominator by 10. Okay? Because we have one decimal place here so that we, we don't work with decimals. Okay, so here we're going to have 10 times 10 as 100 over, down here we have 25. Okay, uh, it's 25, then how many 25s are in 100? They are there four times. So meaning the percentage error is 4%.
Question 17. The function f and g are defined by f of x is equal to 3x minus 4 and g of x is equal to x plus 1 over 3. Find f to the power negative 1x. So whenever you see a function that has been raised to the power negative 1, it means they want you to find the inverse of this function. So at A, they want you to find the inverse of the function uh, f of x. But remember, the function f of x is this one, okay? f of x is equal to uh, 3x minus 4. So now, how do you find the inverse of this function? The first thing to do is to let f of x here to be equal to y. So in other words, where there is f of x, you put y. So you're going to have y is equal to 3x minus 4. Like this. Uh, next, at this stage, you swap x with y. So what I mean is where there is y here, you put x. And where there is x here, you put y. So you are going to have x is equal to 3. Here you put y minus 4 like this. At this stage, m at t, making y the subject of the formula. So meaning this term must be removed from the right hand side. Uh, so this is negative 4. To remove it, we're going to remove it by additive inverse. We're going to do the opposite of negative 4, which is positive 4 on both sides. Okay. So here on the left, we're going to have x plus 4 is equal to 3y, then negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So this has become a 0. So to get the value of y, we divide both sides by 3. Okay? So we're going to have y is equal to x plus 4 over 3. So this alone is the inverse. So what we have to do is just to conclude and say, therefore, uh, f inverse or the inverse of the function f of x is equal to this, x plus 4 over 3. So the inverse is x plus 4 over 3. So you write it here, uh, f inverse of x is equal to x plus 4 over 3. Alright, at B, they want you to find the composition of G of F of X. So, the composition of G of F of X. Now, what does this mean? It means that this can be written as G, the function G, then F of X like this, F of X like this. So what does this mean now? It means that this function f of x is inside the function g. Okay? So meaning, where there is f of x, we are going to replace the function f of x, which is 3x minus 4. So we are going to have 3x minus 4. Alright. So this is going to be g of 3x minus 4 is equal to so since we said this function f of x which is 3x minus 4 is inside this function g it means that where there is x in the function g we are replacing 3x minus 4 okay so i'm going to write this so i'm going to open the brackets like this then plus 1 over this three like this now the question is what are we going to put in the brackets what we're going to put in the brackets is this function f of x which is 3x minus 4 so we're putting 3x minus 4 in the brackets so let's just expand and simplify here we're having uh, this will be 3x minus 4 then plus 1 over 3. So we are having 3x. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 over 3. So we are having, we can factorize the 3. We have 3, then x minus 
1 over 3. So this 3 and this 3 can cancel. What we are ha going to have is x minus 1. As the composition of f of g of x. So g of f of x is equal to x minus 1. Like this. Alright, part C says the composite of g of f of negative 3. Alright, so C, they want you to find g of f, g of f of negative 3. Where there is x here, they have put negative 3, which means that here where there is x, you put negative 3. So you are going to have negative 3 minus 1 is equal to negative 4. Okay, so the answer here is negative 4.